Hey folks, today we're going to talk about dependent sources. There are four, count them, four different kinds of dependent sources. We have two voltage sources, two current sources. What makes them dependent? Well, they're controlled by some other current or voltage. So you can have a voltage source that's controlled by another current or another voltage, or you can have a current source that's controlled by another voltage or another current. So there's your four. Typically, these are drawn with a little diamond, like so. So a voltage source would just be drawn like this. You'd have a certain value for it, which I'll explain momentarily. And usually for the current source, there's an arrow, right? There's a value for that. So as I said, there's four of these. You can have a voltage-controlled voltage source, VCVS. So some voltage controls the value of this voltage. So you, you wind up with a unit of volts per volt. Now we can also have a voltage controlled current source, right? That would be this guy, voltage controlled current source. Now, because you've got a voltage controlling a current, in other words, volts versus amps, the unit for this is transconductance, right? Um, you know, we're familiar with conductance. Well, we just call it transconductance for active devices. There's a symbol we use for that. G is conductance, but we call that GM. We can have a current controlled current source. So this is some current producing another current. So the unit for that is amps per amp. And then finally, we have a current controlled voltage source. All right, so a current controls a voltage. The unit for this is trans resistance, like we had transconductance. This is just called trans resistance. So in a circuit, you might see a source, you know, like uh, I'll just use a current source here. And this might be something like, you know, um, 50 times I X. So the value of this current is 50 times this other current I X. So you'd have to know what I X is elsewhere in the circuit. Now we typically use these things for device models, like models for transistors. Right? You don't go out and buy a dependent voltage source, like like you would buy a a uh, you know a bench power supply. Okay, let's take a look at how we use these in a circuit and how we solve uh, systems that have these dependent sources. Well, there's two basic styles, as I'd like to think of them. The first one I call an uncoupled. And these you would probably see in something like uh, maybe an amplifier model, where we have um, a source and its value is dependent on, let's say, like an input voltage, like from a microphone. All right. Okay, so these are actually fairly straightforward to compute. So I'm going to start with uh, a little DC source here, maybe 10 volts. Put a couple of resistors in here. Let's say uh, 16K and a 4K. I'm going to call that point right there, node A. And then here is the uh, controlled source. So this is going to be a current source. And this is going to feed a couple of resistors out here. Let's make this, uh, call this point B, and we'll call, let's say, a 12K and an 8K. Now, the value of this current source is going to depend on the voltage node A. In other words, this voltage here across the 4K. So I'm going to say the value of this source, I'll just call it IS, is going to be 0 0.01 times VA. Right? So this 0 0.01 is in fact the transconductance. Right? So this is a voltage-controlled current source. Right? Voltage-controlled current source. Okay, now I say it's uncoupled because VA, the controlling element, is not affected by the value of this current source. We're going to see an example in a moment where that's not the case. 
So these things are relatively straightforward to calculate. Um, you know, if, if the question is, what the heck is VB? Well, we have a couple options. Um, the straightforward way to do this is first just find out what VA is, plug it in here, that'll give you the value of IS, and then just solve it, you know, like a normal, um, you know, Ohm's law, KVL, KCL kind of application that you would have. So what is VA? Right? I mean, really, ground is connecting these two. This is another way of think of uncoupled. Okay? That's just ground. So there's nothing, there's no connection. There's no bridge from this side to this side. All right? Uncoupled. So VA is simply the voltage divider. We have the 10 volt source times the thing we're interested in, 4K over the total, 4K plus 16K. So that's 20K. All right? That's going to give us 2 volts. So if that's 2 volts, I can then figure out the value of IS. Because IS is 0 0.01 times VA. Now remember, the unit for the 0 0.01, that's a transconductance. So this really does turn a voltage into a current, right? Volts times conductance gives us amps, right? Siemens. So we would, we would say this is perhaps 10 millisiemens. That would be the normal way of specifying that. Anyway, when we um, multiply out here, right, we find that we get 20 milliamps for the current. And now you can just take that current, if I'm trying to find VB, that feeds this parallel combo, so I can just find out what that parallel combo is. I'll just call it RL for our load. Oops, that's a K. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. So 12K in parallel with 8K is going to get us 4.8K. And that voltage VB then will just be 20 mils times 4.8K. K's mils cancel, 20 times 4.8, we're looking at 96 volts. Bingo, done. Now you could also, alternately, you could write your source as an expression. In other words, like if this is going to change, it might be more convenient to do it that way. In other words, you could say, well, VA is the source E times, I'll call this R2 and this R1, and R2 over R1 plus R2. And then you can put that expression in here. In other words, such that IS must be 0 0.01 times E times R2 over R1 plus R2. So like I said, that's useful if um, elements back here are changing. All right, second version, coupled. This is a little bit more challenging. I mean, there's really nothing new here. This is just like solving two separate circuits and using the answer from one side to give you the answer for the other side. So like I said, could be something like an amplifier. You know, we have an input signal and we have an output signal. Now, a couple, a coupled system doesn't work that way. The value of the of variable source, the dependent source, can infect the thing, the, the parameter that's actually setting up the source. Uh, nodal usually works really well for these. You can use other techniques, but I think nodal works really well. So let's put one in here. So I've got my uh, E1 source over here. Uh, let's say that's 20 volts. And I'm going to put a, maybe a 4K resistor over here. And a 100 ohm resistor over here. Let's call that point A. Put in a 1K there. And here comes our controlled source. I'm going to make this a current controlled voltage source, the exact opposite of what we had over here. All right, so this is a voltage source, and we'll call it E2 to distinguish. The value of this is 500, right, that would be the trans resistance, times Ix. What is Ix? Well, I'm going to declare this current over here that's flowing down through the 100 
ix. Now this is where I'm talking about this thing being coupled. If you think about it, this current, right, that, or I should say the current that's created by this source, right, as it flows through here, contributes to ix. But ix is what sets up that original source. Let's see, there's kind of this sort of circular definition almost. Okay. All right. So 500 is a trans resistance. Now I can't just go in and find ix like I did over here, right? Because the value of the source depends, uh, sets up the value of ix, which sets up the source. So how do we do it? Well, like I said, nodal works pretty well. I would suggest looking at the uh, node A um, and just defining some currents. All right, so I've got this current. I'm just going to assume current this straight, you know, just like we would in nodal. You can just make some assumptions. Don't know if they're correct or not, but I'll just say I got that one, I got this one, and then there's IX coming out. All right, so your, your KCL basically is you've got this current through the 4K coming in. You got this current through the 1K. And they're going to combine and make the current down through the 100 ohm, which is IX. All right. Or IX, whatever you want to call it. Beautiful. Now, as is usually the case, we just start to write some equations, right? KCL. So KCL says I4K plus I1K must equal I100. Remembering that I100 is IX. Now write each of these currents in terms of their Ohm's law equivalent. What is I of 4K? Well, that's the voltage across the 4K divided by 4K. The voltage across it is 20 volts on this side minus whatever VA is. That's the potential difference. Divide that by the resistance of 4K. So we've got 20 volts minus VA divided by 4K for that piece of it. What is the current through the 1K? Well, it's the voltage on this side minus VA divided by 1K. What's the voltage on this side? It's 500 IX. So you take 500 IX. Well, we don't know what IX is, but, you know, we're going to minus the VA. So that gives us the potential divide by 1K. Arf. 1K. Sorry about that. All right. I100, what is that? Well, that's the voltage across the 100, which is VA. So that's just VA over 100. Now let's um, divide the, you know, let's uh, separate these things out, simplify the equation, gather up our terms. So we have, um, for constant, 20 volts over 4K. There's that piece of it. Then we have, um, I'll write these out as separate coefficients, a negative... 1 over 4K times VA, as we would normally do with nodal. Then we have uh, this piece over here, this 500 over 1K IX. So, you know, we can think of that as 1 half IX. Then the other piece of it, which is the VA piece, right? So we've got a negative 1 over 1K times VA, and then 1 over 100 VA. So this way we've got everything nicely separated out in terms of coefficients. All right, so IX, we know that IX is I100. So I'll put this off here on the side. We know that IX is I100, and what is I100? It's VA over 100. So let me take that and substitute it in here. Now remember, this is basically just one half IX. So what we end up with is one half times VA over 100. Well, what is that? That's one over 200 times VA. All right, 20 volts over 4K gets us five milliamps. And then we have one over 4K, negative, I should say, one over 4K for VA. This piece, as I said, uh, one half IX, one half 
VA over 100 is 1 over 200 VA. Just basic algebra here. Um, we've got our 1K for that one, and then the 100 ohm for this one. Now collect up your terms, your VA terms, and we wind up with 5 milliamps, our constant, equals all of the coefficients, which would be uh, the, the 1 over 4K. We've got the uh, 1 over 200. That's negative. I'm going to put that at the end. We have the uh, 1K over here, which is uh, negative. That's going to turn into a positive. We have the 100. And as I said, we had that plus 1 over 200, which turns into a negative 1 over 200 over there for VA. Okay, so now we can just sum up our coefficients and uh, solve for the value of VA. And when you do that, VA turns out to 0.8 volts. Okay, so if that's the case, therefore, if VA is 0.8 volts, I can figure out what IX is. Because again, IX is I100. which is VA over 100, which is 0.8 volts over 100 ohms, which is 80 million, or excuse me, 8 milliamps. Therefore, E2, 500 IX, that's 500 times 8 milliamps. or half a K times eight, however you want to look at that. That's four volts. All right, now let's go check this. Cross check. If VA is 0.8 volts, then I through the 4K would have to be 20 volts on one side and 0.8 volts on the other, divided by that 4K. Our basic Ohm's law relation here. That works out to 4.8 milliamps. Meanwhile, the current through the 1K would be the E2 potential, which we said is 4 volts minus the VA of 0.8. And that, of course, is dropping across the 1K. So you got 3.2 volts um, sitting over 1K. That gives you 3.2 mils. Well, you got 4.8 coming in this way. You got 3.2 coming in this way. They combine and go down. So the I100 is the sum of those two. 4.8 mils plus 3.2 mils is, lo and behold, 8 milliamps. There you go. Everything cross-checks. All right. So we very often use, uh, as I said, these uh, controlled sources as parts of models. You know, we would model, for example, a bipolar uh, junction transistor as a current control current source. We would model a uh, field effect transistor as a voltage controlled current source. So you know there would be parameters that we would be interested in. You know, we would there would be a GM, a transconductance for the FET. There would be a, a, a beta, a current gain, if you will, for the bipolar junction transistor. So we're going to see these again, particularly in um, in your semiconductor and devices work. But there you go. Okay, uncoupled, coupled versions of our dependent sources. Beauty.